the Microsoft Surface Book 3. If you've seen one of these before, you're probably disappointed that it looks exactly the same as the previous two. If you haven't seen one of these before, you're probably thinking, what's the deal with that freaky hinge? And yeah, it is definitely a bummer that the Surface Book 3 looks identical to the Surface Book 1 and 2 before it. But if you're new to the game, you just want to know what the deal with this weird hinge is, it's because this laptop's claim to fame is its ability to do this. There are a lot of laptops that are also tablets out there, two-in-ones as they're called. Uh, most cases, let's say the Dell XPS two-in-one, uh, you've got a clamshell laptop and you can fold the keyboard behind the screen to make a tablet. Then you have another class of hybrid, your iPad Pro, your Windows Surface Pro 7, too many services, not enough time, am I right? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, but those give you powerful tablets and then you can attach a clip-on keyboard to it to make kind of a computer. This is the only thing on the market, which is a dedicated clamshell laptop, really powerful one too, where you can detach the screen and this becomes a standalone power tablet with its own battery and speakers and such. The thing with the tablet function though is that it's mostly for creatives. It works really well if you've got the Surface Pen, which will cost you another $99 by the way, not included. I have pretty big hands and even the 13.5 inch model using that as a tablet, uh, it was borderline too big for me for, for reading purposes. The 15 inch, you might as well just be reading off an actual stone tablet as, as a very large tablet, which, you know, again, great for creatives. One of the best things about the laptop itself is the screen, which is a three by two ratio, 3000 by 2000 pixels. It's a beautiful screen, so it works great as a tablet if you can hold it comfortably. To get the separate laptop from base situation working, Microsoft has made some compromises though. Uh, firstly, in the processor. No matter what processor you get, the 13 inch comes with the i5 or an i7, the 15 inch only i7. Uh, but no matter which you get, it'll use, because the processor is in the screen and not the base, it'll use a 15 watt processor, not the standard 45 watt processor for more powerful computers. What that essentially means, without getting too technical, is that Competing laptops with similar specs but with more watts, the traditional 45 watts, would be better at running multi-core processors uh, than this guy. It's not a huge deal, it's not a really big difference, but it's a difference and you're paying a lot, so, you know, it's a thing. Another compromise is the speakers. Like the processor, Microsoft has put the speakers in the top bit and not the bottom, uh, and as a result, they're kind of underpowered, especially on the 13.5 inch model, uh, which not only is it, are the speakers in my entry-level 2017 MacBook Pro better. Uh, the speakers in my phone are also better than the speakers in the 13.5 inch model, which is pretty disappointing. Uh, although the 15 inch fares quite a bit better. Change is the essential process of all existence, Commander Burnham. But everything I've just said more or less applies to the Service Book 1 and 2. So what's changed with the new one? Obviously not its design. It's all in the internals, but even then, it's not a huge overhaul. First, we have the 15 inch model. Inside this is an NVIDIA 1660 Ti Max-Q chip. That's good for a laptop of this size, but not really great. You can, however, get a 15 inch model with a Quadro RTX 3000 card in it, although that's kind of a different thing. Microsoft classifies that as Surface Book for Business. It's kind of only for professional uh, creatives, who do really GPU intensive stuff, and that's reflected in the price. It starts at $3,500. More interesting are the graphics in the 13.5 inch Surface Book 3, because it's actually really unusual for a 13 inch laptop to have a discrete graphics card, much less one that's as powerful as the one in here. It's an NVIDIA GTX 1650 Max-Q GPU. That GPU isn't powerful enough to make this a dedicated gaming machine per se, but it is powerful enough to play most games, even the more demanding ones, if you switch down the graphic settings. Most pricey laptops will let you do some photo editing on the go, but the graphics power on this also means that you can do some video editing on the go. That's really handy for a 13-inch laptop. And lastly, apart from all the bells and whistles, and there are a lot of those, these are just really good laptops. They get a lot of flack for being kind of thick uh, and wide at the base, and they definitely are, but the upside to that is that the keyboard is phenomenally spacious. It's actually the most, probably the most comfortable keyboard I've used on a 13.5 inch laptop, and the 15 inch one is great too. That's kind of like a boring detail, I guess, because keyboards aren't particularly sexy. Can't understand the importance of a good keyboard though. 
The trackpad is super responsive and has a really nice grip. Only complaint is it's a little bit small. The port selection is not the best, but they're pretty good, especially if you're used to living in MacBook land. Uh, you've got two USB-A slots here, as well as an SD card slot reader, big deal for some. There is a USB-C slot, however, it is not Thunderbolt, which means that uh, the Surface Book 3, both models, won't be compatible with certain peripherals and monitors. That is a bummer, but Microsoft says that it didn't use Thunderbolt because there are certain security risks associated with it. So yes, it does suck, but depends how much weight you put in what Microsoft says. One quick note on the design though. There is a clear disadvantage to the fulcrum hinge that connects the tablet to the base. It stops the laptop from sealing completely, so dust and other bad stuff can still get through even when you shut it. One of the nifty things Microsoft has done is that they put a battery in the screen and a second battery in the base. What that means is you can detach the screen, go on out there, Netflix and chill, live your life, and then you come back and you reattach it and then you'll run off the battery in the base uh, despite having a depleted tablet battery. Although when they're connected, the battery will deplete and charge at the same time. So it's not like you get twice the battery life of a normal laptop. Although the battery life is solid. I was able to get a full workday out of this guy pretty easily, um, but not best in class. Both of these are exceptionally well-made devices. You can feel the build quality basically from the second you touch them. They're super good clamshell laptops and the unique detaching screen is really well done and really helpful if, if you're after that. But who should actually buy this? An important part of that answer is the price, obviously. So these ain't cheap. The 13.5 inch laptop starts at $1,600, but that's with a model with an i5 processor and with integrated graphics. You're really, if you're gonna splash out this much, better off spending the extra $400, taking it up to two grand, and that'll get you the 13.5 inch model with the Nvidia graphics card inside, and you'll get an i7 and double the RAM and double the storage. The 15 inch line starts at $2,300, and if you're after the super powered business line, that starts at $3,500. So either way, whether it's 13.5 inch, 15 inch, or business line, you're spending some pretty serious cash. It's not that these computers are overpriced, it's just that the average person who uses their computer for Facebook, Netflix, Microsoft Office, etc., won't really use most of the features that make it expensive. So if you are just looking for a decent laptop to do all those things on, you don't really need to spend the money that this costs. However, if you're in need of the portable power, or you're after a particularly luxurious tablet laptop hybrid, the Surface Book 3 line won't let you down. Let's just hope that this is the last time a Surface Book looks exactly like this.